Hello to you all. In my last video, I showed you a bunch of tools that you can start using right away to just experiment with Clo. But it was uh, come to my attention that so someone told me that I didn't explain one of the most basic things, which was the UI and how to navigate. Now, these videos were meant to were meant for people that are already in the, into 3D, and I assume that uh, people that already use Maya, Blender, or whatever they would probably start um, figuring out how to navigate and move around because uh, some of them, some of the tools uh, to navigate are like uh, all of them, they, they use, all the programs use something similar. But still, for those people that still feel a little bit uh, out of place when they open this program, which looks like, uh, I don't know, like an aeroplane cockpit. Um, so here's going to be a really quick and basic overview. So the program is mainly divided into two big windows and then some menus. Uh, the biggest windows we can have are the 3D and the 2D. The difference, of course, is that the 3D has three dimensions to work with and the 2D is just two. The 3D uh, view is where we're going to see our models into 3D, where we can interact with them when they are being simulated and where we are going to take our renders if you're in Clove. Some of these tools only appear in the 3D, although some of them do cross over to both sides. Also, these icons are only working uh, in the 3D. The 2D view are where we are going to draft and we are, where we are going to see all patterns laid out flat. Again, uh, these tools, most of them only appear in the 2D, although um, as time goes by and new versions of Clo come, most of the tools are starting to appear on both sides. I don't know if it's because of the programming issues uh, or something like that, but... Um, uh, just a little example, we have here uh, the tools for the uh, texturing uh, that appear on both sides and it used to be the case in all versions that you could only do it in 2D. Now we have of course up here the main menu where we can uh, see the typical menus as uh, save as and things like that. If you want uh, another, uh, maybe a, another rundown of these menus, uh, my last video, in my other video where I was comparing Marvelous Designer and Clo. I explore these menus a little bit further, but I decided that uh, instead of just going through all the UI and explain everything without practicing, uh, we were going to go little by little um, and explore the menu as we go. On one side, we have here the library. This is just a reference to, uh, well, by default comes uh, with a reference of the folders that come with Clo, but we can add our own folders as I have here. And these are just references. So when you double click, you're accessing the uh, the content of your folder. You, when you delete any of these folders, you only delete the reference, not the folder, so don't be scared. And uh, on this side, we have uh, docked the history and the modular configurator. These windows, when you click on them, they're going to be added to the side. And this can be very frustrating because um, instead of clicking, uh, instead of instead of being a toggle where you click once it opens and click again and docks back, uh, they just get added. Uh, to collapse them back, you have to click here on this little arrow here. So the history, uh, just like in Photoshop, you're going to see here uh, all your points, uh, all your clicks and everything. So um, Although it's a little bit slow, sometimes it can be uh, nice to just uh, go back to uh, starting position so that uh, you can clear up the mess. The modular configurator, um, again, I made in my other video uh, a little overview of this, so you can check that one out. To dock them back, I just click there. The library, I sometimes have it open, but uh, just when I give classes because I have my little... Um, class uh, folders, but most of the times I have it docked uh, away. On this side we have, uh, there are actually two menus, but they come uh, glued together somehow. So the object browser and the property editor, uh, you can dock them uh, one by one, although when you open them, they uh, they appear always like this. So the object browser here, it's um, I always describe it as a toolbox. So imagine you go to your workshop with a box uh, full of tools and so this is what you have to work with. For example, fabric, we have only one. So when we construct something, we will be only using this fabric. If you want to use more than one fabric, you will have to add it to your toolbox. And the same goes for the buttons and the buttonholes or whatever. Um, if you want to use something in your projects, you first have to have it. Uh, this is something very confusing, but we'll see it in the future.
And in the property editor, here's where we can change the settings of anything we click on. So if you click on a pattern, if you want to change the color of it or the uh, uh, the elasticity or the shrinkage, here's where you can, here's where you are going to find it. So before this video ends, I would like to show you just a couple of more tools you can use to draft your patterns so you can start doing your designs in a more creative way. So last video, I showed you how you could make your own patterns using the uh, polygon tool, the rectangle tool. And what I'm going to show you right now is uh, the internal line tool. We're going to go more uh, deeply into these internal lines in the future. But for now, uh, the difference is the uh, pattern lines and points, they are always closed shapes and you can do whatever with them, but they have to always be a closed shape, of course. The internal lines are a different kind of lines in the sense that they can only exist inside a pattern, but they can be open shapes. We can use them for various uh, things, just uh, for example, we can make elastic bands using these. Or the main uh, way you can use them is to cut your pattern pieces and make holes. So the internal polygon line tool works almost exactly as the pattern uh, rectangle and the polygon tool except that you have to always start inside a pattern if you try to click out the program is going to tell you please click within a pattern these lines uh, work exactly the same so once you start clicking you're going to place points which are going to be joined by a line if you click and drag you're going to be able to uh, convert the line to a Bezier curve to have curvature and to finish the line you can either click on your last point or click on enter and you will be able to finish the line. Also, if you click on the first point, you will be able to close the shape and that way the action will be ended. When you click enter, click on the last line or the first line, the internal line is done and by default it's going to be selected for you. To modify this internal line, it's the same as modifying the uh, pattern piece. So if you go to the edit pattern, you can access the points and segments of the pattern as well as the points and segments of the internal line. In the same way, if you want to modify it, you can just click and drag the points and this way you can modify the, uh, the shape of the internal line. These synchronizations and stuff, I am not very sure what they are. I call them claw hiccups. They come sometimes. Uh, sometimes you will be editing your points uh, with no problems and everything is going to go very fluidly and fast. And sometimes these uh, loading bars are going to appear uh, annoying you all the time. Okay, so uh, for selecting the entire shape of the internal line, there are two ways. You can either click on the transform pattern tool, which you will be able to this way select the entire thing. Although you run the risk, especially if you are uh, really far away, of selecting the entire thing the pattern and the internal line, which is not ideal. That's why I always suggest everyone to use just the edit pattern, which of course, um, if you just click once, you can only click on one of the segments or points. But if you double click, you will be selecting the entire shape. Even if it's open, you will be able to select the entire shape unless it's broken, which we'll see in the future. Now, when everything is selected like this, one of the cool things you can do, and it, I would encourage everyone to just try this. Every time you try to do something, just try to right click and see what you can find in the menu. Um, when you double click on an internal line and everything is selected like this, and you right click on one of the segments or the points, and you open this menu, you can find many things you can do. Uh, you can rotate it, of course, flip it. Uh, you can use it for cutting, but the tool I wanted, or the action I wanted to show today, uh, was just the convert to hole, which is a very basic one, but it's going to help you to do uh, many things. So if you convert uh, the internal shape to a hole, what's going to happen is that, of course, this is going to be converted to a hole. This is how you can make um, little uh, eyelets or uh, just uh, if you're making a poncho, which I'm going to probably do in the next video, just to, as a quick showcase of what you can do with these uh, super basic tools, uh, you can create the internal shape to just make uh, the hole for the head. Again, to modify this shape, uh, even after it has been converted to a hole, we can use the same tools as I showed you uh, before. If we want to convert a flat segment to a curvature, we can use the curvature tool, which we can use again. Uh, the first time you click, sometimes it always takes a little bit of time. 
uh, to convert it to a curve, but then afterwards you can uh, modify it like uh, in a very fluid way. Uh, again, if you want to be precise, moving the points the same way, you start the movement, click and drag, and you can right click to open the menu or command for Mac people, and you can input your numbers there. Before I go, some couple of interesting things. Uh, if you want to delete your shape, you don't have to do anything special. Just double click on the entire shape. And if you click on backspace, you will be able to delete it. Uh, if you try to delete uh, the internal shape by clicking on only one point or one segment, you'll see that, let me just go back. Uh, you will see that what you do is you just <laughs> delete one of the points and the shape is going to start to uh, change. This is the way you can use to modify the shape you have. So you maybe put so many points that it's just difficult to uh, change the shape. So you take points out so that it's more manageable. Sometimes um, the shapes, when they're more simple, are e easier to uh, modify. So this is a trick you can do to modify the shape. If you want to add more points, here you have the tool to add points or split in line, which uh, work both for the uh, pattern pieces and also for the internal lines. And with this, uh, you should have uh, most of the basic tools to do almost whatever you want. Okay, here's the video for now. I'm sorry for the these super basic videos, but I thought that it was go a good idea to have these uh, super base level videos so that when I make more advanced videos, people that feel lost can in the same channel, go back and review a couple of the basic concepts. What I will probably do in the next videos I mentioned is probably maybe I will do a super basic poncho uh, just so that I can show you what you can do with su these super basic tools and maybe introduce a couple more that are very easy and fun to use uh, before we start with uh, more serious uh, pattern making stuff. By the way, someone asked me if I was a professional. I am a professional 3D artist. Uh, but I am not a pattern maker whatsoever. I work with pattern makers. That's how I know a couple of things, but I am not a professional at all. Although I will try to show you uh, the best I can all that I have learned uh, through this uh, couple of years that I've been working in the fashion industry. So I hope you had fun and wait for the next video.